Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam Hurst and this is the 23rd in our series of the October Gothic A Day, Tempts the Vampire to Stay. Now, as usual, I'll be introducing a text, giving you some idea of why it's important, going over some key plot points and also giving you some further reading recommendations. The last couple of days we've been looking at the ghost story, but we're moving into a different genre today and we're going to be looking at novels and specifically sensation fiction. So we're also going to be going back in time a little bit. We've been talking about the early 20th century, but the heyday of the sensation novel was the 1860s and 70s. Now, sensation novels were novels that mixed together the real and depictions that were broadly realistic or mimetic of contemporary society with the sensational. And what do we mean by sensational? Well, murders, usurpations, bigamy, adultery, robbery, doubles, mistaken identity, and hidden pasts. Now, the sensation novel has its roots in the melodrama. It also has its roots in the Newgate novel from about 20 years previously, which were focused on uh, the stories of criminals. It also has connections to detective fiction and is even sort of a detective fiction itself. Although it includes no real detectives, not even an amateur sleuth proper, it does have its hero, of sorts, engaging in a great deal of sleuthing and having to right some wrongs. There's also, of course, that connection with the Gothic. And these sensation novels were so often bound up with tales of persecution, highlighting quite frequently the position of women in society, for example. They were also tales of murder, crime and mistaken identities. So you can see already some of those links to the early British Gothic novels that we've already talked about. If you haven't already guessed the book that I'm talking about today, it's one of the most famous of the sensation novels and a really fun read. It is, of course, Wilkie Collins' The Woman in White from 1859 to 60. Now, the story is based around Walter Harkwright, who is a young artist in search of a job. And he is recommended to a family in the country of the Fairleys. So Frederick Fairley is the uncle of the lovely Laura. Now, Laura also lives with her sister, Marion Holcomb. But before Walter even gets to the country, as he's in London, he meets on a road outside London, a young woman in white who he tries to help and later finds out has escaped from an asylum. When he goes to the country house and meets Laura, he notices a really quite remarkable resemblance between them. But how important that is won't become clear till later. He, of course, falls in love with the lovely Laura, who, of course, falls in love with him. But there is a flight in the ointment. Laura is engaged to another man, and she is not able to get out of that engagement to Sir Percival Glyde, Baronet. Instead, they marry and disappear on honeymoon for a while. But all is not well, because Sir Percival Glyde is really interested in Laura's money, which is tied up in such a way that if she dies without any children, her husband will inherit everything. As she refuses to give up her money, or her inheritance, Sir Percival, with his friend Count Fosco, comes up with a terrible plan. Now, Count Fosco is one of the best Gothic villains of all time. He's a menacing, intelligent and suave Italian who is full of Machiavellian machinations, and his plan is to do a swap. He is going to take the dying Anne Catherick from the asylum and replace her with Laura so that Anne Catherick will die and be buried as Laura and Laura will simply be locked away in an asylum. And the plan goes pretty well until Walter gets involved rescuing Laura and then Laura, Marion and Walter live together in hiding, trying to reassert Laura's aliveness and her identity. Now, I won't tell you how it ends, but I will promise you a happy ending of sorts, depending on who you're rooting for, really. My favourite character, though, doesn't quite get a happy ending for me. Marion Halcombe is 
One of my favourite female characters from the Victorian period. She's strong, resourceful and intelligent and so amazing that Count Fosco even alters his plans a number of times to let her have a bit of an advantage because he admires her so much. She, however, ends up basically serving as a companion to her sister and as a helper to both Walter and Laura, looking after them when they both really can't look after themselves that well. Now, if the, this novel and all of its adventures and its excitements and its crimes sounds of interest to you, another recommendation of a fairly famous uh, sensation novel is that of Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Braddon from 1862. And I also have a slightly more off-piste recommendation today, caused by one of my own childhood confusions. And that is Catherine Cookson's The Moth. Now, the television adaptations for Wilkie Collins and The Moth came out at very similar times. And the same actress, Justin Waddell, played Anne Catterick and played the character of The Moth in Catherine Cookson. And I thought, I basically got the plots swapped for most of my childhood and teenage years. So I was very surprised when I read Woman in Right again. I was like, what is going on here? That's not what I remember. But I sometimes like to read The Moth as a writing of the wrong of Marion Holcomb's story. So she gets her happy ending and she gets to be appreciated rather than placed in a secondary role. And I think that's worth celebrating. So enjoy your reading. Do feel free to comment and get back to me on your reading experience. Good night.